Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all our Muscadet winemakers out there. I've had, we've had great Muscadet and great seven and block in the show, but this is not one of them. So, Noah's just like, Noah just does not give a fuck. <laughs> I give no fucks or no. Alrighty, we're back again with another edition of Blind Wine Tasting. This is the fourth episode we filmed in the night, so I apologize for my slurred words. Friday night, uh, and we're about to taste a bunch of wines, kindly provided by our friends at Sometimes Always. If you want a 10% discount code, join the Discord channel. You'll be able to get that nice little cheeky discount on anything we try tonight. Uh, and it's, as always, selected by our good friends at Sometimes Always. But without too much mucking around, let's get into it. Let's rock and roll wine number one. We have what Henry probably called a Pinot Gris. He's probably correct. This looks like peach juice. So I assume it's gonna not taste like peach juice. I've been burned before and I feel like I'm about to be burned again. Same color as my shirt, there you go. It's peach fuzz. It's absolute peach fuzz. If someone's just thrown a, a full peach at a wall, I'm just smelling the residue. On skins like this, I imagine it would probably bleed out and it's been unfiltered. And it smells like musket. It just smells like floral white. This, this is a wine that doesn't need too much said about it. It is perfectly phenolic. It's perfectly ripe, great acidity, uh, beautiful fruit flavor. I want to spend uh, $38 a bottle, the natural wine number, and I want 12. Man, this is an epic little peach fuzzy little orange wine. Holy shit, I drink so much of this. This is Banging. I love it. Stone fruit, all of these wonderful, sweet, juicy things. Hey, Daniel's here. Special guest, Daniel Bernardo. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to the show, Daniel Bernardo. Uh, the man who I once sat through a 24 hour FIFA tournament with. That is absolutely true. It has a soapiness. And when I mean soapiness, it mean, I mean the acidity here is dropped, um, which is classic Gewurz. Um, the color tells me Gewurz. The smell and aroma tells me Gewurz. I think it's yummy. I'd pay $26 a bottle for it and uh, I'd buy six bottles. I think that lower acidity is gonna just kind of shirk on me a little bit. It's gonna, it is a bit soapy, uh, a little bit broad, a little bit flat. Um, and so for that reason, only six, not 12. We'll see how we go. Number two, a little bit more yellow as far as the kind of color of it, a little bit riper. Yellow boy, more traditional in color. It does have the color about it that I'm probably gonna guess it's a Chardonnay, even though it definitely won't be. Mm, it smells kind of sweet. It smells kind of like we did one last week that was this uh, off dry Riesling sort of thing. Yeah, not in Riesling territory. I actually think we're in Chardonnay territory here. So we've actually got a little bit of a, like a, a depth and a weight to the aroma of this wine. And a little bit of oak, a little bit of batonage, a little bit of everything. That's always things with Chardonnay. Quite often it's not, we do a lot of stuff because Chardonnay tends to showcase the winemaking yeah. really, really clearly. I'm just gonna say Chardonnay because it's that boring. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's as boring as Chardonnay looks on a wine list. It's just like, it kind of, it does all right. It's got some savory characters. It's got some nice phenolic grip, but. Look, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, white is not my, no, why is not my style? Bad day to walk in here. This is a, a, few this, this is a, a green apples, honey, green vanilla. Apples. <laughs> green apples, honey, vanilla. <laughs> hey, look, man, it might no, be. It's... Uh, green apple acidity, a little bit underripe. Probably tells me that um, it's New World, Australia, probably because of where we're based, we see a lot of Australian wines on the show. I think it's, you know, moderate quality. I wouldn't necessarily, it's like sky high, fucking fantastic trip over yeah. yourself to go and get it. I, I would certainly would buy it myself. I'd spend around about 28 bucks a bottle and I'd buy three bottles. It is fine. If you want a cheap bottle of Chardonnay, if I, I don't want to spend money. I, did, I, I do not want to spend my money on this wine. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of what I feel. So, the thing is that this looks like rosé, right? But there's yep. a bit of a shtick going on the show at the moment about how everything that looks like a rosé is actually a skinsy Pinot Grigio. And I called it one time when they thought it was a rosé. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it for integrity, until I nail it, it's probably Pinot Gris. Um, That's exactly but... <laughs> what <laughs> Nice kind of cranberry strawberry thing. Acidity is nice and sprightly, really good fun. Rosé, whatever, three, three bottles at $22. Or could it be a skinsy Pinot Grigio? Oh no! <laughs> it's really hard to say because usually with a rosé, I'm looking for a little bit more sort of like, it's dry, it's not sweet, but it's usually got like berry. It smells like a rosé, right? Quacks like a duck, it walks like a yeah. duck, but does it swim like a duck? It's, it's not interesting enough for me to like absolutely gravitate towards. So yeah, I really don't care. I don't care about this wine. I don't have any feelings towards it. It's quite delicious, but I don't really if someone handed to me, I was like, oh, thank you very much. But not going like, who is this by? Where is it from? What can I spend for it? 
I don't think it's Pinot Gris. I think it's a red grape variety. I think it's Italian grape variety, potentially Sangiovese or Nebbiolo. Good quality rosé. Um, no two ways about it. Uh, Twenty. Six dollars a bottle, and I'd buy six bottles just because I think it's really yummy and great cannon fodder wine. Wine number four, honeyed, yellow, all these sorts of fun things. All right, wow, really interesting. White wine that smells like salumi. Who would have thought? Um, <laughs> this is a weird wine. What the fuck? It generally tastes like nothing. It genuinely tastes like nothing. It tastes like overcooked sandals. That's my tasting note of it. It's just a little bit, it's got acidity. That's all the things I can actually say positive about it. But unfortunately, it's just a really flat note, boring one. But then try, it's really soft. It doesn't hit you with that sort of like acidity and tartness that you were talking about with the first couple. All right, so Brisley, what do you think, Dan? The what now? <laughs> what, what sort of grape is it? Oh, what grape? It, it tastes like an Italian wine. This white wine smells incredible. This is honeyed, we're talking like honeydew, blase, uh, tropical fruits. Wow. Um, but not weighted down in that respect. It's actually quite, already showing quite light. Um, really quite elegant. Yeah, wow, that's um, that's fascinating. Um, I'm gonna throw uh, a hat onto Viognier. It's a bit of a weird smelling Viognier, but um, we'll give it a crack anyway. Um, and I would pay, I'm gonna throw around about $45 at this, and I'm gonna buy three bottles, just because uh, I, I'm looking for a little bit more freshness, a little Bit more zip. We'll take um, six of those home with us, I reckon. Yeah, 12. If, if we've got the pocket in the bank. Oh, <laughs> Have you seen the price of diesel? We haven't got that <laughs> yeah. sort of fucking pocket right now. Uh, number five, orange wine. Hell yeah, brother. Super awesome, like, bergamot like, orangey color. Now, I know we don't, we don't know what lanolin means, but tell me you do. That doesn't <laughs> reek of lanolin. <laughs> it just does. Yes, it's very full. <laughs> That's what I think lanolin is. Lanolin. Should I just do a lot. quick Google and then cut it out and then we'll just act like experts? Nah, nah, nah <laughs> that part in there. Lanolin lifted. It's lanolin, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is is definitely there in spades. Great tannin structure, awesome kind of like peachy tone to it, but not enough kind of body to kind of back it up. Yeah, cool. Yeah, like if you haven't tried anything in this style, I really hope it's like in that kind of $38 bracket. I hope it's like an Aussie natural wine kind of made in this style. Uh, you're not yeah, big on the florals? It's quite floral, yeah, I'm not big on floral. But I can definitely, I think with food, that would be really nice. Usually when I smell a wine, I won't like the smell of it and then I'll taste yeah. it and it tastes better. This is a good example of that. Like this yeah. doesn't smell super appealing to me. Like, I don't know what it is. It almost smells That's like- That's quite apple -y, actually. That's quite apple -y. That's actually quite apple -y. Just has a bit of a tartness to it. Yeah. Yeah. Good note. This is this is an orange, like a grown up orange wine. Like there's orange wines like Esoterico that we sort of make for everyone to enjoy orange wine at Unico. Right. This, is, this is as grown up as it gets. Cousin, by the looks. Like, look at how similar those yeah. colors are. Maybe a little bit less clear. This is a little bit cloudy than yeah. the previous. How do you get that cloudiness? Great question. You should ask someone who knows. But a little bit cloudy this time, <laughs> so we're a little bit overcast for this particular sunset. This is very interesting because it has something that the other wines have not. In fact, not a lot of wines on the show have had this, and that's called Botrytis. So this actually is has got quite a lot of Botrytis in it. And Botrytis is a rot that actually occurs to the, the grape variety just at harvest, typically when we've got high humid conditions or foggy conditions. A little bit like more peach fuzzy, a little bit more stone fruit, a little bit more like kind of grassy elements. Quite like this, quite like this. I'm gonna go $45. Again, no idea what it is, but I think it's a really good uh, little example of someone Australian doing a take of like something like Radicon or anything like that. Bloody apple juice. Uh, yeah, yum. That's what yeah. I want that one to taste like. It also smells better than that. Yeah. That's my pick of the bunch. I'll yeah. take I'll take 12 of them. Again, super tardy, like afterwards. Yeah. After it settles, it becomes very tart. Look forward to seeing what the boys have to say, but thank you very much for the help. You no were... worries, thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me. Speaks volumes to how good I am that you were really helpful there <laughs> because you've never done this before. <laughs> All right, cool, let's do this. Are we on? Let's fucking go! <laughs> back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, so, we had uh, six wines today. Out of the wines we tasted tonight, this is the fourth tasting we did tonight. Mm. This was comfortably my least favorite. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was hard to navigate. Uh, Anyways, uh, let's get into wine number one, which yeah. I personally thought was one of the wine. Really? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. 100%. Okay. Uh, it was absolute peach fuzz, party juice, very, and very I would good. be very happy to pay about $38 uh, for 12 bottles. See, I was 
way down on this. I only want to pay thirty-seven dollars for this one. Now, I, was, I, look, I, I really like the I really like the nose on this one, but it was one of those things. I find that it's very rare that I'll smell something and be like, "This smells awful," and then taste awful, like, except for a very few selects. But this yeah. one I smelt and I was like, "Yep, yeah, into it," and then tasted it. And I was like, "Ah, that's just missing." I wanted it to yeah. be peachier. I wanted yeah. it to be more of what it had. I thought, well, firstly, this is one of the first orange wines that I think quite confidently I can tell the variety. Well, these Gewurz because of the slight red tinge and the lower acidity. Uh, Lucky, what was it? 32. 32. Yeah. Good value. 30, Genuinely 30, good. 32. Right in the slot. Yeti and Coco! It's one of the better wines that they've done, man. There's oh, one of the better wines. Not I'm a big fan. Not even close. Not no? even close. They, they have been upping the game very much recently. Muscat Blanc reasoning, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, Gewurz, German. We were all right. Yeah, <laughs> all of us were correct. There's no wrong answers here when you blend them all together. Really cool. Really Great. fantastic. Honestly, uh, like, amazing wine. If you want to try like hardcore kind of natty wines from the Barossa all places, you need the cocoa. Will always steer you the correct way. Brennan, what are they like as people? Oh, bloody the salt of the earth. Salt mate. of the so, earth. Salt of the earth, mate. Tip of the spear. Edge of the knife. Crack, Crack of my, of my ass. ass. <laughs> Number two. This was bad. This, I had three bottles on it. Uh, you know those like online quizzes where it's like, type in all these things, we'll give you your rap name. If that wine did this, it'd be called a little reductive. Like I just, I'm not super about it, but like, I don't know. I had one bottle of 28. There's just like that little bit of fartiness in there. You really I, don't like reduction. I'm sorry, yeah, I don't, know, reduction. I don't know if it's a controversial Shabble opinion price. to be like, I wish it didn't Good. smell like someone had farted in the glass. Like I, like. You don't like that? Uh, 28 bucks for one bottle. I wasn't super about it either. Lucky, what was it? Yeah. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, so this mm. is a uh, Les Fruit. It's, it's pretty fine. Good. It's pretty good. And at 32, was it 32 bucks? Honestly, 30, good value. Honestly, good value. If you like natural Chardonnay, great value. Yeah. But would I buy a bunch of bottles? Nah, good nah. Uh, I'd so I'd rather buy the one bottle and have that. If I owned a wine bar, I'd love to have that in my front window. It's like, look at the sort of wine. It's a beautiful label. Yeah. I will say it one time, I'll say it a thousand times. If you're going to buy Chardonnay, buy fucking Chardonnay. Yeah. This ain't it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, no, well, that's the thing. It's like, if you're going to buy Chardonnay, spend like 80 bucks and do a good job of it and you will have your mind blown and you'll be convinced that Chardonnay is one of the most yeah. impressive grapes globally. Yeah, if you want to buy Chardonnay and not spend $80, just DM me, I'll sort you out with some cheaper ones. But I do, <laughs> I agree with what you're saying in principle. And wine number three, uh, good old nondescript rosé. Skimsy was... Pinot Grigio, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the foray. I hope you're right. I, hope I I'm genuinely right as well. hope you're right. I, I called like Sanji, like Italian grape variety, new world rosé, only because like Canon Fodder wine, do I, like 12 for me is one that viscerally makes me go yum. Things that make me go yum. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. It, three bottles, 22 bucks. Yeah, yeah, three for 32. Pretty, pretty slamming little rose. What do we got? Oh my Jesus. Some fucking expensive Pinot Grigio. Oh, it's in a uh, Rosato. 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 Uh, well, that explains uh, the reduction. That explains, uh, like, it's not. Nerello Capuccino and Nerello Mascalese. Pretty good. Uh, again, it's not their main thing that they do. Like, it's not like they're specialists in rosé. Yeah. Uh, and quite often this stuff's a bit of an afterthought. I'm not saying that, that this is an afterthought. It is a perfectly fine, great rosé, right? Yeah. It's oh, fine. It's great. Super it's, drinkable. It's good rosé, but if you're going to spend $50 a bottle on rosé, don't do it on this. There are better options out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To buy on rosé, far better. You could buy a table at that price. That's <laughs> 50 bucks. If I'm gonna spend, tarble, yeah, I just want something that tastes specifically more like rosé for me. Like a little bit more berry, a little yeah. bit drier, a little bit yeah. of all those things. that I, Like that super cold, I don't know if it'd be as refreshing as some of the other rosés that I prefer to drink. Little, yeah. little. Uh, moving right along, uh, Ooh, number yeah, four. I had absolutely no idea what this was. Oh, this is Yeah, but I did not like it. it. smells like honeydew. It's got the weirdest, like, sweet smell without being sweet. It does smell it's, super It sounds sweet. like Shannon to me. Like, yeah. you smell it and you go, oh, it, Everything tastes there's no acid. There's no acid, so it must be Viognier. That's, that's a good shout. But look, I, I thought it would cost me more than I would spend. So 45 bucks, instead of buy three bottles as a, you know, a curie curio. I wanted a glass of it for $30. Interesting. Bottle, I basically. had this listed as a Fiano and it was going to cost me $39 and I'd like six of them. God um, help I me would. if it's Fiano. Yeah, God see, the fact Fiano. that every we time I... Might, we might have to retire and just like quit. <laughs> every time I... Every, so Lucky, what is it? Okay. You're in Fiano territory. Yeah, there's no Fiano character there. Alouette. There's a, a What the fuck is that? Vin de France. 
Melon Blanc, yeah. Uh, I need Melon, you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's in Muscadet and Sauvignon Blanc. So who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all our Muscadet winemakers out there. I've had we, we've had great Muscadet and great Sauvignon Blanc in the show, but this is not one of them. So. Noah's just like no, it just, does not give a fuck. I give no fucks or no. So <laughs> after six thirty, Noah's giving some unrivaled opinions. Let's go. That's it's a rough one. It's a rough one, and it's a bit of like he's right. How much was that? Forty eight bucks. Waste yeah. money. <laughs> at, 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 honestly, at at that price point, there's so many other more interesting things at that price point. There is more interesting things at forty eight bucks. Price of fucking lettuce at this current time. <laughs> Why would you space your money on that? On on, and fucking savable Savignon Blanc. Fuck it. Well, let's move on to like a, a much better quality wine. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. This Good was wine. this was my Good personal wine, wine alignment. Now, I've really, I love okay. this. I really enjoyed it. I've got a question for you about this. So, when uh, Dan and I were smelling and tasting this one, the word that came to mind, even though we don't know what this word means, is lanolin. 100%. It's lanolin. Yeah, fair enough. Let's go! Are you kidding me? Yeah! Is that what lanolin smells like? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I said uh, 2. I think you said 12. I said 6. I wanted 38. 60 bucks. 48. Hey, there you go. Magic number. Magic number. What are we going to what is this? Yeah, That's beautiful. fucking cool. It looks like cool a new label. Pokemon cover. Trebbiano Greco Malvasia. So oh. it's Trebbiano, it's, it's Greco Greco Malvasia. It's the uh, the, t the tastiest thing that you can possibly do with Trebbiano. Incorrect. Incorrect. Uh, Trebbiano is Greco. No, it's, it's not. not. Trebbiano. Trebbiano is Uni Blanc. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, it's Uni Blanc. It's, it's the most tasteless grape variety they use in cognac. Greco is Greco. <laughs> Uh, Grichetto is not Greco. What is it? It's Grichetto. It's oh, its own variety. I'm fucking so wrong, eh? <laughs> Dude, you've been on fire really, today. I'm I, crashing back that, down to earth. Malvazir is, is uh, really quite like aromatic. That's incredible. That's a, I think that's a really but good... 38 movie. bucks is pretty good. 38 bucks Italian, like, I would put that up next to last week's Radicon. Oh, but, it's way but, better than last week's Radicon. Last week's Radicon was superior in my opinion, but I will put it up there at half the price. I'd say, pretty amazing. Right, man? <laughs> no, I'm not right. Um, I'm only okay. Personally, wine and wine up! up. Let's yes. go! Get good, Brenda. This is fucking banging, bro. All right, so I had one bottle. It's, it's exactly so you guys what you on, want. So it's, it's what you want from this and this, but in one fucking wine. Exactly Except what I said. No, acid. no, no, sorry, it does have this one. What's the one that had acid? It's just really weird. It and like it's also riddled with botrytis. Hey, is that a bad thing? No, it's not, but I just. I, it's, Call it's, Chateau de Chem right now and say botrytis is a bad thing. But it's not Chateau de Chem, it's an orange wine. Oh, it, it, great, awesome, it's but fucking it, banging. It tastes fungal. Tastes like cloudy apple juice. Hey, it's man, awesome. It, it's great. I love it. Six bottles for 45 for me. Uh, 12 bottles for 40. Uh, it's 60 and one. Right, no. Hey. So you were kind of what right. is this? Nando. Nando. It's the most expensive get, get trip to Nando's I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like getting, like. getting out of the chicken business. Uh, Robolichiala. Slovenia. There you go. Hey man, each of their own. Each of their own. Yeah. What are we going to have as wine of the lineup then? Because you hate that. No, no, you guys are into it. Wine of the lineup. Hey, I will, I will absolutely concede. Like, that's the thing, we all have very different tastes in yeah, wines. Right. So this wasn't the most disappointing for me that we've had in a while, but I completely understand where you're coming from in the sense that no, none of it was sensational or anything, but there were just moments in the middle where I was like, oh, yeah, this is fine. Just imagine if there was a sweet, crisp white burgundy. Oh. This. Wouldn't that just be like head and shoulders above? I can't imagine what that I'd, would be I'd, like. I'd, 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 I'd sell my first No idea. What that <laughs> challenging. Probably one of the most challenging brackets. Yeah, lots yeah. of fun though. See you next time, guys. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>